This verse also, if we go into the depths of it, some people say, you know, there is God is not really having a form. Beyond the form, the God with the form is a light. That is the ultimate realization, that light. But Sri Krishna says, no, Mattah Parataram Nanyat. Arjun, there is no truth higher than me. It is the same one God who's got his formless aspect and his personal aspect. They are not two different gods or bigger and smaller God. Murtan Chaiva Murtan Dwe Eva Brahmano Rupe. Jagat Guru Shankaracharya said, and the Vedas say, Dwe Vava Brahmano Rupe Murtan Chaiva Murtancha. That one supreme absolute truth has got his impersonal aspect and his personal aspect. But Sri Krishna in his personal form is telling Arjun. There is no truth superior to me. So in the next few verses, he is going to give Arjun an appreciation of what he has said. Remember in this chapter, he is trying to reveal to Arjun the nature of devotion, the object of devotion and the process of devotion. So these verses, he is making arjun appreciate his glories eighth verse raso ham apsukaunteya raso prabhasmi shashi suryayo prabhasmi shashi suryayo pranava sarva vedeshu Shabda ke paurusham rishu. Shabda ke paurusham rishu. So having said that everything is situated in him, now Sri Krishna says, Arjun, in water there is taste. That taste is my glory. Is there taste in the wind? Now, is there taste in solids? You will say, of course, there is taste. You take a chocolate and it has got taste? No. Solids don't have any taste. You dry your tongue and place a solid there, you will experience no taste. Taste is carried by liquids. When either it's a liquid or your saliva dissolves the solid. Then the taste comes in your perception. But by themselves, solids don't have any taste. So this quality of taste has manifested in the liquids. How did it manifest? Sri Krishna says, Arjun, that is me. That is God's glory manifesting. He is just giving little, little samples to help Arjun appreciate who is God. And then he says that the radiance in the sun and the moon, that is also me. Now just think about it. We take the sun for granted. You know, that's what we were discussing, taking God's grace for granted. But we take everything for granted. Our intellect is lazy. So we do not ponder deeply on the miracle taking place around us always. Otherwise, imagine what the sun is. I believe it is like one million nuclear power plants working together. So a rough estimate is one million nuclear power plants working together. That is the sun. Where did the nuclear fuel come from? How did it get arranged? Poor India is still struggling. They've got nuclear technology but no fuel. 
enter into agreements with India and with Canada and with France. We get some and then where to get the technology from, how to polish it. And so many problems and so many scopes for errors. Recently what happened in Japan, the tsunami hit and the nuclear power plants, they got corrupted. Now imagine there, 93 million miles away from our planet Earth is this nuclear power plant. That got created apparently by itself. And it's been functioning properly since so many billions of years. So if you saw a nuclear power plant in the world and you asked me who made this, I told you it got made by itself. What do you mean? I mean, you know, in India, there was no nuclear power plant, but then there was a bang. <laughs> and then after that, now that I go back to India, I find there's a nuclear power plant. It was created by a bang. You will say, Swamiji is crazy, forget it. <laughs> but that's exactly what science wants us to believe, that the sun got created by a bang. There was this big bang many, many billions of years ago and the sun got created. Imagine such a sophisticated nuclear power plant that hasn't gone wrong even once, right at the center of our solar system, providing us with such an essential item for life, which is light. And of course, vitamin D. Medical science says, right, at least spend 4-15 minutes in the sun every day for your vitamin D. So all these things that sun is doing, how is it doing? Shri Krishna says, Arjun, that's my glory manifesting there. And then reflecting of the moon, it's giving you moonlight at night as well. And the moonlight has got its own mystic powers. It is soothing to the mind. It is nourishing to the vegetables. It's got so many impacts. These are Arjun, all my glories. And then he says, you have Ved mantras. The, the bead, the seed syllable in these mantras is either Kling or Reem or Om. Most of the Vedic mantras, they have Om in the beginning. Om Purnamada Purnamidam. So that Om is added, that is called Pranav. And this Om is also supposed to be the sound that is vibrating all over the universe. The yogis, they meditate on that Om, that energy of God. So Sri Krishna says, Arjun, I am that Om. In other words, what he is wanting Arjun to appreciate is that if you see something spectacular anywhere, know it to be the glory of God. Verse number 9. Punyo Gandha Prithivyancha Chasmi vibhava sav. Chasmi vibhava Jivanam sarva bhuteshu. Jivanam sarva bhuteshu. Tapas vishu. Just as Taste is the trait of liquids, the characteristic of the earth is its aroma, the smell. One of the favorite smell of Indians, after the hot summer season when the earth is parched and the rain finally falls, that monsoon, that Shravan mass, the rain, 
as it falls it brings such an aroma that people are intoxicated ha ah, shravan mass has come the monsoon month has finally come you get the smell of the earth so shri krishna says arjun i am that smell of the earth and i am the austerity of ascetics the speciality of ascetics is their intensity of austerity what is austerity austerity is the willful renunciation of pleasures for spiritual enhancement the people perform varieties of austerity some people perform fasts some people maintain celibacy some people practice the austerity of knowledge some practice the austerity of remembering the name of god so many different kinds of austerities so the hatha yogis are particularly famous for their staunch austerities if you go and see in the himalayas you'll find yogis apparently performing unbelievable austerities so how do they get this tremendous strength for renouncing pleasures for maintaining vows where does this ability come from shri krishna says arjun i am that ability for austerity in them bijam mam sarvabhutanam विद्धि पार्थ सनातनम विद्धि पार्थ सनातनम बुद्धिर बुद्धिमतामस्मी बुद्धिर बुद्धिमतामस्मी तेजस तेजस्विनामहम तेजस तेजस्विनामहम कंटिन्यूइंग to reveal his glories to arjun he says arjun you see there are intelligent people in the world if you see somebody particularly intelligent know it that's my glory manifesting there if you see somebody particularly brilliant in some activity know that it's my glory if you see somebody like mozart who's like a musical genius who's playing since the age of 4 you can understand god has manifested his musical intellect in mozart making him so talented like for example in english literature the the star in history in english literature has been shakespeare comes to everybody's mouth he has not been exceeded in history imagine how astonishing one person who was such a genius in his ability to grasp human nature the phenomena of the world to express them now how do you make sense of this so first i read this statement by swami vivekanand we said that the british empire served a function in history the function of the british empire was to unite the world in one language so god particularly allowed or engineered the british empire to rule the world that he wished the whole world to have a common language for communication so alongside with making english the language of communication in the world he got a person called william shakespeare to be exceedingly brilliant to nurture the literature of the english language which permits people to be inspired till today 
and to pursue it, to delve into it. So if we see that brilliance of William Shakespeare, we can see, as Sri Krishna says to Arjun, he is that brilliance in that person. We also saw brilliance in Bill Gates. Again, I, I just wondered that, you know, how did it happen, this guy called Bill Gates, was he so brilliant that he had, he went all the way from zero to the richest man in the world. What was propelling all this? And then I realized that God wanted to tie the world in one operating system. I mean, imagine the chaos that would have taken place if there had been 20 different operating systems. <laughs> like happened, you know, in, in the, the, the video scene, you have got NTSC in America, you've got PAL in India and the British Empire, and you've got CCAM in Japan, etc. And for people in video work, it's such a headache. Different cameras, different tapes. So God decided that if this kind of thing happens to computers, <laughs> everybody will go crazy. So Bill Gates was fortunate to be chosen by him. <laughs> so Sri Krishna says, Arjun, listen. By their own ability, human beings can be brilliant, but not that brilliant. And if you see somebody particularly brilliant, know that it is my glory manifesting. The same in the spiritual realm. As somebody said, an acharya is one through whom the divine power acts. When God starts acting through somebody, that person is then the acharya. 